This video is all about the Dark Saber. It's a really cool weapon from Star Wars, and it's arguably had a cooler journey than even Anakin and Luke's lightsaber. You might recognise it from Clone Wars or from the season finale of The Mandalorian. Well, lately, I've been binging a lot of Star Wars content, even more than usual, and I've been doing my research on Wikipedia, so I think I'm finally ready to tell you all about this badass weapon. It's basically a cool black lightsaber. But to be a bit more thorough, it has a unique blade that was shorter than that of most lightsabers, and it is shaped like a traditional sword. It also has a crystal inside of it, which acts as a conduit for force energy. The wielder's thoughts and actions guide the blade's current of power, with the blade often producing an electrical effect in response to a heightened emotional state. Basically, I really, really want one. So just like Han Solo dancing, it's cool and it's powerful. But now, let me tell you a little bit about its history, where it came from, and where it ended up. And to do so, I'm going to need to explain to you how time works in the Star Wars universe. BBY and ABY. That means before the Battle of Yavin and after the Battle of Yavin. It's kind of like BC and AD for us. But in Star Wars, they focus around the conclusion of the first film and the destruction of the Death Star. Got it? Okay, so legend has it that the Darksaber was built over a thousand years before the Battle of Yavin. By a man named Tar Vizsla. Vizsla was the first ever Mandalorian to be inducted into the Jedi Order. It was kind of a big deal, and when he passed, the Jedi wanted to hold on to the Darksaber as an artifact. But the rest of House Vizsla didn't agree with this idea, so they liberated it and brought it back to Mandalore, where they thought it truly belonged. This happened at the same time as the fall of the Old Republic, so the Jedi were pretty distracted at the time. This was way before even the prequel films. Specifically, it was before 1019 BBY. House Vizsla would use the saber to unify the people of Mandalore and strike down those who would oppose them. They ruled all of Mandalore, wielding this blade, and so the saber is an important symbol to that house and is well respected by other clans too. The dark saber was then passed down from generation to generation. House Vizsla would hold on to the weapon until it reached a man called Pre Vizsla. So this next part takes place between episodes 2 and 3. In 19 BBY, the final year of the Clone Wars and just before Revenge of the Sith. At this stage, the people of Mandalore had become pacifists, replacing the warrior ways of old Mandalore. Pre Vizsla was the current head of House Vizsla, and he didn't agree with these new pacifist ways. And he wasn't alone in thinking like this. He was also the head of a group called Death Watch, who were dedicated to returning Mandalore to its former glory and overthrowing the current government. Pre Vizsla used the blade during his conflicts with New Mandalore and the Jedi. This included facing off against Kenobi, and succeeding in taking over Mandalore. In fact, it's in large part thanks to Pre Vizsla and Death Watch that Mandalore began to return to its old warrior ways. Not long after the takeover, Darth Maul showed up, killed Vizsla, and took the Darksaber as his own, making him the new leader of Death Watch and briefly the ruler of Mandalore. It's pretty wild, and this arc is some of my favourite stuff in Clone Wars. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling good tonight. Maul even uses the saber against his former master, Darth Sidious, but unfortunately gets his red and black booty beat down, and then he's taken and imprisoned. But don't worry, he escapes in a comic series called Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir. A Mandalorian by the name of Commander Saxon helps him escape, but we'll get back to him later. After this, the saber lays low for a while and we don't see it until well into the Imperial Era, which was the time leading up to the original trilogy of films, when Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader ruled the galaxy. It is in 2 BBY when Maul crosses paths with a group of rebels, and he tries to seduce a young Jedi in training to the dark side. The Jedi, Ezra Bridger, discovers the Darksaber amongst Maul's possessions, and he even uses it at one point to defend himself. But ultimately, it is Sabine Wren, a fellow rebel and a Mandalorian, who brings it with her. Sabine is then trained on how to use the Darksaber by Kanan Jarrus, one of the few Jedi who escaped the Purge and Order 66. Then, while on a mission to Crown Est, which was Mandalorian territory, Sabine became the rightful wielder of the Darksaber after defeating the current leader of Mandalore, Gar Saxon, in a fair duel. Remember him from earlier? He used to work with Darth Maul? Well, now he works for the Emperor, aka Darth Sidious. Sabine would then give the Darksaber over to Bo-Katan Kryze, who she deemed to be the rightful person to lead the Mandalorians against the Empire. Then we skip to five years after the original trilogy and the fall of the Empire, to 9 ABY, and the finale of the first season of The Mandalorian. 
By this stage, the weapon had fallen into the hands of Moff Gideon, the leader of an Imperial remnant on the planet of Navarro. Now unfortunately at this stage we don't know what happened to Bo-Katan Cries, or why this guy now has the Darksaber, but perhaps that will be explained in The Mandalorian Season 2. Either way, that is the latest time that we have seen the Darksaber within Star Wars continuity. And like I mentioned up top, what a journey it's had. I want to know who you think is the person most worthy of wielding the Darksaber. Please leave that in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like on the video and be sure to follow Batarang to the Butt on Facebook for more geeky good stuff just like this.